everyone book review today and sorry i've not been around for a few days i've been on holiday to walt disney world in florida so that's why it's been a bit quiet anyway while i was on holiday i managed to read two books the second of which was the invisible library by genevieve cogman this is a sci-fi fantasy series which deals with uh, a secret library collecting books and alternate realities and it was picked up for me by my husband last year on a whim because he just thought the premise sounded really good and I really enjoyed it. Um, you're starting off almost thrown in the deep end, you're not given much information to know about this world or the characters that you meet and you learn it as you go along. So if you don't like being in the dark for about 50 pages, probably don't pick this book up. But it'd be a shame because it's a really interesting read. I like the the use of alternative realities for collecting lost books. Um, I think that's a very clever little tool to have. And the reason why the Invisible Library, as it's known as, wants these books, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I think that is going to play out later on in um, further books in this series. I know there are about four five out at the moment now so i'm interested to see how this story progresses if you didn't want to read the whole series you could just read the invisible library and be very happy with it because it does wrap up its own storyline very neatly it leaves it kind of open for future stories but it's not necessarily you have to go and read the next book things are sorted out to a degree um so it's, it's one of those stories if you wanted to see if you'd like this style of book you could read it and be satisfied. Irene is the main librarian that we follow. She has a history already, which is referred to in the story. Don't panic, you haven't missed a book. They're just referring to her history. And some of it is relevant to events that actually end up happening in this book. She's kind of a very self-assured person she knows how she's supposed to behave as a librarian and is always adjusting her attitude and her emotions so she is portraying the perfect librarian to some people this might mean she comes across as cold um but to be honest if that's how she's been taught to be as a librarian then it makes sense for her to act that way that's fine with me um, there are some very obvious literature borrowings in here, um, particularly the work of Doyle and Dickens. A lot of readers will recognise that kind of stuff going on. It doesn't distract. It's quite interesting to see it being played in a slightly different way and a slightly different reality, um, as it were. So I did enjoy that aspect of the story as well. Um, characters have their own agendas their own secrets going on which i can't tell you anything about because again spoilers and i don't like doing that so i would say it's one of those books that you want to go in knowing as little as possible you can read the blurb and just dive in from there you don't need to know a huge amount of detail about this book because i think it ruins it for the reader it's better to go in not knowing what's going on why it's going on and who's up to what so i don't want to spoil it for you if you want to go and read it but i think it is a book that you would enjoy if you like classic victorian literature um obviously books and books and more books and the idea of books being protected um for the sake of history humanity um various other reasons um, but if you like those kind of ideas and concepts, then this is a book for you to try. I think you'll get on with it really well. What's really nice about this book is it's not written in first person, which is quite refreshing lately, to be honest. So if you're a person who really enjoys this book, there are more to plunge into already waiting for you. So, you know, it's the best of both worlds. You don't have to follow the rest of the series, but if you wanted to, you could. So there we go. The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. I really enjoyed it. I think you will as well. Now, as I'm doing this video as part of the Strike Back Videoathon marathon of videos, I'm going to call out a few small booktubers. 
So I'd like you to go and check out these people. I will leave their links in the description box down below. Sophisticated Books, Royal Evil Reads, Kitty G, The Rainy Reader and Paul Reads. Please go and check out these smaller booktubers. Some are smaller than others. Um, show them some love, subscribe, ask for notifications, watch their videos, get their view count up. Because as I'm recording this, uh, the monetization deadline has kind of hit. And I've seen already a lot of smaller booktubers. Well, I wouldn't class them as small because they're over a thousand subscribers, but they've already received their notification that they've been demonetized because they don't meet the targets anymore. So let's please go out there and make a concerted effort to go and watch booktubers videos and other smaller YouTubers out there that you may know of and that you enjoy. Let's go and support them and get them back up to being monetized again. So there we go. That's all I have to say. Um, if you scroll past all those featured channels in the description box, you'll find a link to my book blog, which I have been keeping up to date with, ish. And my social media links if you want to chat with me on Twitter, um, that would be great. Goodreads, I'm around on there. And Instagram, where I tend to post just things about books. So if you want cat selfies, I'm not the person to follow. But if you want book selfies, yeah, come and follow me. That'd be lovely. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching and happy reading, everyone.